Hi my friends! So welcome back to your last Farm Friday Zoology lesson. I have been so excited to teach you these lessons over the past several weeks, but unfortunately today is the last Farm Friday Zoology lesson. So let's get started. So our lesson this morning is on the mosquito. So I know a lot of us get a little bit annoyed with mosquitoes. They bother us, they buzz around us, and they bite us. But I do want to talk to you about them, why some of them are important and some of them are harmful. So I have my card here, and it shows a mosquito. And this is a female mosquito on the card because she does have her abdomen full of blood because female mosquitoes need blood and I will get to that in the lesson once I talk about the life cycle. So I want to talk a little bit about mosquitoes. So mosquitoes are insects. They have six legs. They have compound eyes. They have a head. They have a thorax. They have an abdomen. They also have wings. Some mosquitoes have two sets of wings, and some mosquitoes have one set of wings. It just depends on the type of mosquito or the species. So, where do mosquitoes live? Where do you usually get bitten when you're outside and a mosquito is biting you? Are you in your house, close to your house, or maybe are you near water? or are you near trees, things like that? Is it usually when you're near water? That is where mosquitoes like to live. So mosquitoes like a moist or a wet or a damp environment. That means there is water present. One reason is because that is where the female must lay her eggs. Two, that is normally where their food supply is. So they live near a small pond or a small creek, but they like water that's not moving at all. If you see the water that is here by Miss Tabitha, it's not moving. This would be the perfect environment for a mosquito. They don't like water that's moving. They want it to just be still, like a bucket of water or this glass of water, anything like that. They don't want water that is moving like a river or a stream or the ocean. So what do they look like? We know they're very small insects. They measure anywhere from an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch long. And that is about as long as your pinky finger, the nail at the very tip. That's about how long they measure. They're not very big. Sometimes they might get up to the size of the width of your thumbnail, but they stay quite small, my friends. They look different. Some of them are black with white stripes, like the female that is in this picture. Some are brown, and some are a golden brown, so a lighter brown. Some of them have stripes, like this female in the picture and some of them do not. Most of the male mosquitoes do not have stripes, but some species they do. But the same thing for some of the females of different species of mosquitoes. Sometimes they do not have those white stripes on their thorax and abdomen either. So what do they eat? I talked about how the female mosquito eats blood. She uses her mouthpiece, which is called a proboscis, to insert it into the skin of an animal, such as a human, or a horse, or a cow, or a goat, or a lamb, or a donkey, or a mule, those animals that we have here on the farm, but also many other animals, deer, raccoons, squirrels, dogs and cats, a female mosquito is not very picky because she needs that blood 
to help her to produce eggs so that she can continue to make more baby mosquitoes. But the male mosquito, he is very different. He doesn't need blood to survive. He actually is a helpful insect. He drinks plant nectar. So he, he aids in pollinating flowers. He drinks the sweet nectar, which is sort of, sort of like sugar water. It's very sweet. It attracts different insects like a male mosquito or a butterfly. A butterfly has a proboscis as well, which is a special mouthpiece that they can extend to drink that sweet nectar. And a mosquito can do that as well. The male mosquito can. So, that proboscis that a female mosquito and a male mosquito have, that's sort of a silly word, but it is a special mouthpiece that is hollow, like a straw or a tube or a needle. And I'm going to show you how it works. So, Miss Tabitha has a syringe with a needle attached. We use these here on the farm to give medicine to our animals, but this one has not been used for that. And I want to show you how a female mosquito or a male mosquito gets their food. So I do have some purple water here. And you can see that the needle is here. And then we have the syringe tube here. And inside of the mosquito's head in their mouth, there's a special muscle and when they are pulling the blood or the nectar from their food into their body it pulls it just like this as you can see i'm pulling the plunger of the syringe and we're going to pretend that this is a mosquito's head and here is the proboscis and you will see because the syringe is clear you will see me pull the purple liquid up and into the syringe. See? Just like that, my friends. And now I will push it out to show you how it comes out. Would you like to see that again? I'll do it one more time. So I will pull the purple liquid up and into the syringe. And again, there's a hole in the end of the needle. That is to simulate the hole in the end of the mosquito's proboscis. And now I will press it back out. So that's quite neat. So if you happen to have just a plastic syringe at home, you could try this. You could also just use a straw. You could put a straw into your mouth and suck some liquid up into it, and that is a good simulation of how a mosquito, either a male or a female, will bring into their body through their proboscis their food, whether it is blood or nectar. Okay, my friends, so I'm going to demonstrate closer for you to be able to see how a mosquito draws liquid through their proboscis. So again, I have our needle here. You can see that there is a tiny hole at the end of the needle. And then we have our clear syringe here. So I will draw the liquid through so you can see. I pulled a little bit of air, which is okay. I'm going to put it further in the liquid so you can see better. And there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this part of the lesson, my friends. Again, you can try this at home if you just have a plastic syringe from medicine. You can try it with that, the plastic part. You can also try it with a drinking straw or other things. So, as Ms. Tabitha said, with the female, they do drink blood. And that can make a female mosquito very harmful to humans and the other animals that she bites because this, the mouthpiece, her proboscis, like I said, is like a needle. And
and she pierces that into the skin of the animals that she needs to drink the blood from. Well, sometimes there is still some blood from another animal on her proboscis. So when she presses that through the skin, sometimes that animal's blood, one tiny little drop, will get into the other animal. So let's say, for instance, a mosquito bit a wild animal here on the farm, like a deer or a raccoon. And then later in the day, that mosquito bit Miss Tabitha. A tiny little drop of that animal's blood might get into my body, into my blood. And if that animal had a disease, it could make me very sick. So that is why mosquitoes are very dangerous, the female. They can transmit very deadly diseases, such as West Nile virus, malaria, yellow fever. Those can make people and some animals very, very sick, and sometimes they will die. So that is why it's very important if you know that there are mosquitoes that live near your house. You can try to prevent them from living near your house. You can try to make them go away and find another place to live. So as Ms. Tabitha said, they love water that is just in a bucket or a cup sitting outside. So if you have buckets of water or things like that outside of your house that you're not using, pour that water out and flip the bucket over. Don't leave the water standing. Usually that happens after it rains. It will collect some water. Just go ahead and pour that out. Use it to water your plants. Also, you can protect your body by wearing long sleeves. Like most of has right now, I have my raincoat on because it's raining a little bit outside. But also, my raincoat is loose. You see, it's not tight to my skin. So that means it's hard for the mosquito, the female, to bite through my coat and bite my skin. Other ways that people can prevent a mosquito from biting them or their pets or other animals. Some people like to use a spray. There's one type of spray that is that has DEET in it and it will kill the mosquitoes. So that's one option. But there's also a natural option that uses the oils from certain plants. This is the one that Ms. Tabitha likes to use because it doesn't irritate my skin. If I use something like this, it gives me a little bit of a rash. So I use this one and it's more natural. It's safer, especially when I'm here on the farm and I'm working with the animals. If they were to get this on their skin, it wouldn't irritate them or make them sick. And this one has plant oils in it. So it has rosemary, which is an herb you can eat. It has lemongrass, which is also something you can eat. It has citronella, Citronella is used in a lot of insect repellents because insects don't like the way it smells, so they fly away, which is great for us. Clove oil. Clove is a spice that can be eaten. And there is also geranium oil, which comes from the geranium plant, which has beautiful, brightly colored flowers. So again, the oils are removed from the leaves of those plants and made into a spray, and I spray this on my clothing and also on my skin to keep insects from biting me. So those are ways you can prevent it. Not letting water stand near your house in buckets and things covering your skin. You can also, I could zip my coat up all the way, I could make sure that the skin around my ankles wasn't showing so no mosquitoes could bite me. So. As I talked about, the female mosquito does bite you, and when she bites you, some of her saliva irritates some people's skin sometimes. That is why sometimes when a mosquito bites or inserts its proboscis into your skin, it itches a little bit. That is from her saliva causing you to itch. So that is one other fun fact about mosquitoes. Another is that buzzing noise. Usually that's when you know a mosquito is near you. You hear a buzzing in your ear. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Do you think that comes from the mosquito's mouth? Do you think the mosquito is flying around saying bzz, bzz? No. Those are the mosquito's wings 
in one second, and we know the passage of time of one second is the amount of time it takes for you to say one Mississippi. That was one second of time. In that short period of time, a mosquito, male or female, can flap their wings 500 times. Not one time, not 10 times, 500 times. So their wings moving that quickly, pushing the air out of the way, makes that buzzing sound. It's not their body, it's not them making that noise, it's their wings pushing the air 500 times in one second. That is amazing. So now I'm going to shift over to the life cycle of the mosquito. So I talked about how the female needs blood to create eggs to continue the cycle of the mosquito. So we're going to start with those eggs. So again, mosquitoes need an aquatic environment. So the female mosquito will lay her eggs in water, so in something like this, still water that's not moving. Those eggs will pupate or grow into larva. So they look a little bit like worms here. Here they look like eggs. Here they look a little bit like worms. They're not worms. They are mosquito larva. So they still live in water. They don't have wings yet. In the water, they eat algae and bacteria that is growing, and they continue to grow. And sometimes if you look into a pail of water that is sitting out, you might see little things that look like worms that are doing like this. Looks like they're swimming or jerking around. Those are mosquito larvae. And they are a lighter color, sort of a gold color. So they will continue eating that bacteria and that algae, and they will grow into pupas. So they will have a tail, and they will have a larger body. That means their body is pupating, it is changing from the egg to the larva to the pupa, and they are changing again into their adult state. Once they have pupated, into their adult state, they can then leave the water environment that they were born in and go and find food. If they're a female, they will be looking for blood. And if they are a male, they will be looking for plant nectar, that sweet water, water-like substance that is inside of some plants. So I will be including this in your lesson. There are also cards. So we have the eggs, we have the larva, we have the pupa, and we have the adult mosquito. Now this is a female, but the male looks very similar, just sometimes he does not have those stripes on his abdomen the way that a female does. So I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. I know that we don't always like mosquitoes because they are annoying and they bite us and they buzz around us and they cause our skin to itch. But again, remember, this is what they know. This is how nature made them. So if they bother you, just shoo them away, but try to prevent them from being near your house by pouring out water that is nearby, covering your skin if you need to. You can wear a hat. You can wear a scarf if you need to, whatever you need to do to keep them from biting you. So again, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. This is our last Farm Friday Zoology lesson, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye, my friends.